Hey guys, B1 Studios here with another interesting tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at what I think is the best way to manually transition from one effect to another within Adobe Audition. Now, you could use this technique whenever you have an audio file that you want to apply an effect to and you want to transition from the original to this new effect or vice versa from the effect back to the original. So this is super easy, super simple, and once you've got the premise down, it's pretty easy to understand. So without further ado, let's get right to it. Alright, so here we are in Adobe Audition, and for this tutorial I'm going to be using my go-to soundtrack for Audition tutorials, which is Unity by Kevin McLeod. And I will link that right down in the description, so if you want to follow along with me, you can download it right from that link. So, I'm just going to go ahead and import this into Audition. We're going to make a new multi-track session. I'm just going to call it Tutorial. And we'll hit OK. So now we have our multi-track, and I'm just going to take our Unity audio file and drag it in. And we have a pretty nice soundtrack here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this audio file and I'm going to right click, convert to unique copy. Now what this does is it makes another copy of this inside of my files section here. So if we just go ahead and drag our second copy in, you'll notice that one of them says Unity 1 and the other one says just Unity. So the one with the 1 on it is actually the copy that we've made right inside of our multi-track. So what we're going to do is open up one of these, in this case I'm going to open up the original, and I'm going to start adding some effects. So we're just going to go with a simple AM radio effect here, and that's going to give it a nice little radio-like effect. I like that, I'm going to hit apply. All right, so now we have our effect on this audio track. I'm gonna go back to the multi-track and you'll notice that it's changed. So I have my effect on one of them. If I just solo that track, you can hear it in all of its AM radio glory. And if I go back to the original, we still have that as our second copy. Alright, so now time for the actual transition part. So I'm just going to zoom in here. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to take our original file and trim it to where we want to start hearing it. So in this case, I'm probably going to want to trim it to about six seconds. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to maybe 10 seconds, and I'm going to take my second file, I'm going to hit Control K, and what that's going to do is it's going to cut it. So now we have two parts, I'm going to delete the second half of it, and now what we have is the beginning of our audio track in one effect, and the rest of it in the original. So now, all that's left to do is actually transition between the two. So how we're going to achieve this is simply by taking the little box up on the top left corner of the original, and we're going to drag it out to do a quick fade in. Now you'll notice that if you pull it up and down, you can actually change the curvature of your fade. And you have a lot of control over how you want to do this. So, for instance, if I just set my original to a linear fade in and my effects track to a linear fade out, that's going to give me a very straightforward transition from one to the other. Mm -hmm. 
but the trick is that perhaps we don't want to do a linear transition. Perhaps we want to curve our effects track up a bit. And maybe we want to have our original fading in almost like an exponential growth graph. So it comes in slowly but increases at a much faster rate after that. And for the effects track, we actually have the opposite going on. It's slowly fading out but then rapidly fading out towards the end. And I found that this sort of system actually works quite well if you want to transition from your effects track to your regular track. So really from here on out, all I have to do is actually adjust all these parameters until I get the sound or the transition that I want. So if I make it fade in faster, the transition will actually be a lot shorter. Okay, maybe that's a little bit abrupt, so I'm probably gonna change it back to the way it was before. And perhaps play a little bit with the fade in, fade out. That still sounds a little bit abrupt, so I'm gonna go back and tweak the actual track a little bit. I might wanna bring up our linear value for the fade. I'll just make this a little bit longer. Alright, I think I'm pretty satisfied with that, so I'm just going to keep it how it is. And I think that's about all I've got. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this tutorial as much as I enjoyed making it, and I will catch you guys next time.